All right, I think we've had enough of that. Hello there, lovely people of the internet. My name is Christina, and I'm a marine biologist, outdoor educator, and kind of overall nature enthusiast. And today, in my first ever video, I would like to tell you guys all about wading birds. They're absolutely incredible ones that we get here in the UK. So wading birds are kind of birds that live on the fringes of water, whether it's the coast, estuaries, or even rivers. Loads and loads of diversity. They come in every size, shape, and color that you could possibly imagine. Um, and they're absolutely beautiful. So believe it or not, winter is actually the best time of year to see these wading birds, because we get a whole range of different species that migrate here to the UK for winter from colder climates. So it's the best time of year to go and look for them. So fingers crossed, we should be in for a really good little wildlife morning. Migration is an adaptation that many animals have evolved to survive. And with the ability to fly, it's no surprise that birds go through some of the biggest migrations seen in nature. From late autumn to early spring, Britain sees a massive influx of wetland birds from their breeding grounds in the Arctic. Alright, good morning, good morning. Just coming up to 8 o'clock here. And I'm just about to head out to our first site to look for some of these wading birds. 8 o'clock's quite nice with the sun coming up. Better than the summer when you're getting up at stupid o'clock. Quite like it. The first site I've come to is a sandy, rocky beach called Balloch Martin Bay. Wading birds need fine, soft sediment to dig up the small invertebrates that they feed on, so this should hopefully be the perfect spot. I had barely got set up when my first wetland bird made its appearance. These grey lag geese are mostly residents in the UK, although there are some that migrate here all the way over from Iceland. My next spot was a beautiful bird that I'd been really hoping to get a good look at. So I've got a really lovely view at the moment of some bar-tailed godwits um, that are just off uh, straight ahead of me right now. Bar-tailed godwits migrate to the UK every winter from their chilly breeding grounds in Siberia and Scandinavia. This may already seem like a pretty incredible journey to us, but an Alaskan godwit that migrated all the way to New Zealand was shown to have the longest continuous flight of any land bird, 7,145 miles of constant flying. I need to lie down just thinking about it. The next species I saw is one of the UK's most recognisable wading birds the Eurasian Oyster Catcher. Oyster catchers can be easily identified by their bright orange beak and legs, as well as their distinctive black and white coloration. Britain supports around 45% of all the oyster catchers that live in Europe. Contrary to their name, their diet isn't restricted to only oysters. Birds will take a variety of different mollusks, like cockles and mussels, for food, using their beaks to either break the shell or to prise it open. So just in the grass here, I found loads and loads of broken shells and if you came down here and you didn't see any birds, this would be your evidence of wader life around here. So many amazing species in such a short space of time. This was going well. I've definitely put my hand in poo. Yeah, maybe it was time to find another spot. These birds here are called red-breasted megansers. They're not actually wading birds at all, but really belong to a group of ducks called the sawbills, thanks to their long, narrow beaks. Here we have two males in breeding plumage and three females. 
as is usually the way with birds. The males are well decorated and have patterns, stripes and colours, while the females are a little bit more drab looking. This kind of bobbing dance that the males are doing is amazingly their courtship display. After breeding, females will build their nest on a grassy area close to the water. She'll lay a clutch of eggs that could be as small as three or as large as 24. What's more, she has to look after all of these young by herself, as the male will leave before they're even hatched. Bit rude. This was such a great sighting, but there was still one more really incredible bird to see. A huge group of my favourite wading bird and Europe's largest, the curlew. So all the curlews are just over my shoulder here. I'm going to go and try and get a little closer. Sneaky. Two things are especially distinctive about the curlew, its call and its beak. They make a beautiful sound that you can hear up and down rivers across the country, while their beak is pretty hefty, at around 15 centimetres long. Sadly though, curlews are close to becoming one of our most threatened birds in Britain, with population declines of over 40% being recorded between 1994 and 2010. The reasons behind this decline are still unclear, so it's more important than ever that we understand these birds' behaviour and ecology before we lose them forever. While I've managed to see an amazing number of birds in just one short morning, it is important to remember that they remain vulnerable. Habitat destruction, pollution and climate change may cause serious damage to these amazing birds in the years to come. As long as we look after our UK wetland habitats, we will see them thrive even during a Scottish winter. This is absolutely amazing. Whoever says all wildlife goes into hibernate winter and there's nothing to see, you are wrong. This is an absolutely incredible. So many birds out and about, absolutely love it. Oh, my dogs are cold. Oh, isn't that just beautiful? Oh, look at him. Probably wasn't recording. Nope, definitely not recording. I've just got the weird slicks from that guy in the van. I didn't wear the right coloured hat for this. It's not very bird like. Skis, skis! Ah! Oh my god, no!